Hello class and welcome back to my mini series on putting together your AP performance task for computer science principles. Today, we're going to look at the second big requirement. The first was a list. The second is a function. So that's what we're doing today. Now, before we start, I want to mention that I am intentionally making a function that is very simple and doesn't quite fit all of the criteria. For example, there isn't going to be any user input for this particular function because this video is intended to be inspiration and information. It is not intended for someone to just copy paste the code and put it into their performance task. Remember, the College Board folks are well aware that YouTube exists and they are extraordinarily strict when it comes to plagiarism. So make sure you are using this video only to help you in your own project rather than creating it for you. With that said, let's go ahead and move on. So as part of your performance task, you need to have one function that has three different criteria not every function in your program has to have these, but at least one function has to have all three. The first thing you need is a parameter of some sort, which modifies the program based on the input. The second thing you need is some sort of conditional, an if statement or an if else statement. And finally, you need some sort of iteration, some sort of loop. Now, since we already know that we need a list as part of our performance task, again, check the previous video for that, the most efficient way of hitting all of the boxes is to make a list traversal loop that goes through the list and checks every element for some sort of criteria that you can define with a conditional. For today's demonstration, I'm going to make a very, very simple function that will pick out the state with the highest population and display both its name and its population. So I'm going to go into functions. We are going to grab a function that has a parameter. We're going to call this most population. And the parameter is going to be some sort of a number list. So I'm going to call it number list, but that's just a placeholder. When the user calls the function, they will put their own list into these parentheses. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a variable. We're going to define it. This is a local variable, so it only exists for as long as the function is running. And we're going to call it max pop for maximum population. And we're going to start it out. I would say probably at zero would be fine, but if we want to make absolutely sure that we hit the entire list, if this was a list of other numbers, you might be able to have negatives in there. So I'm actually going to make the initial variable the first element of the number list. So whatever the number list is, remember that at least in JavaScript, in code.org, zero is the first index. So the max population will start at whatever the very first number is on the list, and we'll go from there. We also want to log the index of the state with the highest population. We want to know where it is so that we can grab both its name and its population. So I'm going to set another variable. We're going to call it max index, and it's going to start at zero because we're starting at index zero. Okay, so at the end, we're going to have the maximum population and we're going to have the location of the maximum population so that we can pull both the name and the number. Now we're going to drop in our for loop. Now I will do an example with a while loop at some point, but for now, this is the one that folks seem to be the most comfortable with. So we're going to start with this temporary variable i, which starts at zero, right? i for index, and it's going to go up until it hits the list dot length. We're going to start at index zero. We're going to go all the way through the list. This i plus plus means that we're ticking up by one every loop, and we're checking to see if the population is the biggest. So we're going to grab our if statement. If number list bracket i. So if the value at index i is greater than the current max pop, then we want to set the max pop 
to number list bracket i. Essentially what this is saying is it's checking each number in the list. Is that number bigger than the current maximum? If yes, then it's going to set the maximum to the new number and it's gonna do this all the way through the list so that at the end, we're guaranteed to have the biggest number. We also want to set the max index to i, because we wanna know not only what the number is, but where it is in the list, okay? Now, that's it. It's gonna go through the list, it's gonna find the maximum, and it's gonna tell us both what the maximum population is and where it is on the list. Now, this would be a great time for me to put in a return. Now again, I don't necessarily want to return the maximum population. I can find that again on my own. What I need to know is where on the list it was. So I wanna return max index. So before we move on, I just wanna double check, does this hit all of the requirements? Do we have a parameter? Yes, if you don't put in a number list when you call the function, it's not going to work. You have to have some sort of list ready to go. Does it have a conditional and if then? Yes, it does. It checks every single item on the list to see if it's the biggest. Does it have iteration? Does it have a loop? Yes, it has a for loop that traverses the entire list. This function should tick all the boxes, but now we need to go ahead and actually call the function. Now, if you're in my class, you know that you generally put function definitions at the end of your code. I'm not gonna do that this time because it doesn't really matter, but just something to bear in mind. So at this point, my function is fully defined and all I have to do is call it. Now, I could just call it, but because I'm returning a maximum index, I need to have a place to return it to. So this is gonna be a little bit messy, a little bit redundant, but again, this is only for the purposes of demonstration. I'm gonna make a new variable. I'm gonna call it index, and it's going to be the return of this function. So I'm going to grab my function call. I'm gonna put it in here. This is called most population. and I am running it on the state populations list. Okay, and again, the thing that it's outputting is the index, not the population itself. So we'll grab a set text, and we're gonna set the text of the population output to be the state with the highest population is, and we're gonna put a space, end the quotes, then we're gonna use, I think it's pronounced concatenation, where we're gonna put a plus, and then we wanna put the name of the state that meets that maximum index. So I'm gonna say, state names bracket index. Not max index, because index is the variable that we're left with, right? Max index was a temporary variable inside the function. It doesn't exist anymore once the function is gone. So we've got this variable index, state names plus index, and then I'll put a plus and then a period in quotes. So now when I run this, it should say California, which makes sense. California does have the highest population. Now, what if I also wanted to put the population itself, the actual number? Well, I'm gonna go into design. I'm gonna make another label. We'll call this label population number. And the start text is gonna be nothing. I'm just gonna set it down here. We're gonna make it the same 24 point font size. And then back to code, we will set text population number. It has a population of and again, plus, 
And this time, instead of state names index, we're going to say state populations bracket index. And then a period. So now when we run this, we've got the highest, or the state with the highest population is California. It has a population of that many. So to recap, we have now made and called a function that has a parameter, specifically whatever number list is being provided. It has a conditional, which checks each number to see if it's bigger than the number that came before it. And it has a loop that goes through the entire list and checks every single number in that list. Now again, this probably isn't the best or most efficient way to make a function like this, and you're gonna wanna make your own, right? I made one that pulled the highest number in a list, but that is just one very, very small, narrow example of what you can do with this. So hopefully you can take what you've learned here and turn it into something that is yours. This is just an example to help get you on the right foot. If you have any specific questions, go ahead and put them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next time.